So hi, my name is Long Lee, and I have Jeff King here, president of ICC. And to start out, congratulations with the Persecution, persecution of the Year Awards. I went, Thank that was you. a great ceremony. I Thank thought the you. video with the North Korean kid was the most emotional video that was special. I've, I've ever felt. I literally wow. saw you cry, and I was like, damn, I, yeah. really, I wanted to cry. Yeah. But to start out, can you describe your transitioning to becoming a Christian? Yeah. On your website, it's described as you were a radical pagan yeah. to a radical Christian. So what made you want yeah. to switch over? Well, Long, I'm, I'm glad we have two hours because now I'm going <laughs> to unpack it. And all your followers and listeners can listen with every detail. Yeah. <laughs> in other words, I'm going to try to figure out how to do this quickly. But yeah, I grew up in an atheist agnostic home. And at 12 years old, mm -hmm. uh, Long, I just realized there was a God. Okay. And because there is, I could feel him pulling me. And so I found a Bible on our shelves that yeah, was from I heard the you about that for 10 years. Right? Ready? I'm chasing God. He's chasing me for 10 years. Uh -huh. I don't know any Christians. I'm okay. a party animal. Okay. Um, and that gets, you know, I'm progressing towards uh, an alcoholic. And by the time I get to college, I'm That's an alcoholic. Crazy. And I'm a party animal and popular and fun. And, but, um, there was just emptiness and just more uh, and more desperation. And you knew there was something that. more for yourself and you know, yeah. there was like a bigger purpose you had. Well, I knew God was the answer, but I, I'd mm -hmm. read and I couldn't find out how to, be, I didn't understand how to become a Christian. Uh -huh. And I, I give God my life basically, but I wasn't ready. He was waiting until I was good and ready. Uh -huh. And so by the time I get to college and the end of college, I'm desperate. Okay. I am desperate for God, and there is no point to life. I can't find anything that really sustains me at a deep level, and I know God's the answer, but I can't find him. So I say, okay, I'm going to read through the Bible in six months, wow. and then I'll find him. So that's, it's kind of a naive thing. That's a thing. crazy goal. Six months, yeah. the entire Bible? But it's also naive, like I'm no. going to read, and then I'm, I know he's in there. I'll find exactly. him. So anyway, so you know, I, 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 this isn't even a joke. You know, On one weekend, I'm throwing a grain alcohol party. But then every night, long I set out my goal, so uh, I've got I'm going to read through in six months. Exactly. So I'm trying to think how many chapters that was. I think it's ten chapters a day. That's a lot. So then every night, now people know me as a party animal, and then uh, every night I'm sitting there reading my Bible. And they're like, "What are you doing? What are you doing?" Like, I said, well, "I'm reading the change? Bible." Why? Well, yeah, they <laughs> they're like, "Why are you reading the Bible?" I say, "Well, I'm a Christian." Well, my life, anybody who's a Christian knows yeah. that I'm not a Christian. Exactly. But if you talk to me, my heart, I read the Bible all the time. I'm yeah. tracing God. Your heart's there. My heart's there. But I hadn't, I hadn't, there hadn't been a conversion. God hadn't come into my life. So anyways, long story short, I uh, was going from one bar to another. And I prayed that night to receive Christ. Didn't. Um, so maybe two weeks later, I just prayed again and my world turned upside down. Just Guys completely were, made a whole turning point. Just, it, was, it was just the Holy Spirit coming into me and he, you know, he made me a different person. I was a new creation the next morning and I did not know, understand all what had happened to me. I, all I knew is alcohol, poof, it was gone. Poof. No desire. Every, no desire at all. No desire free. That's an amazing experience. Though. Yeah. And had a heart of rock and then all of a sudden the Lord, I felt his love for people through me. So. Exactly. So yeah. speaking of the Lord, you yeah. said you had this dream in 2002 yes. that inspired you to yeah. do the work yeah. and everything you do with ICC to yeah. pursue religious persecution. Yes. So could you describe this dream? Yes, me? Law. So I was with Campus Crusade. I was there for 11 years. Okay. God called me clearly into that work. I'd always said I would never join Campus Crusade. Okay. So that's, of course, where he sends you. That's how it works. <laughs> exactly. So be careful. You know, we don't tell him you're not going to do anything because that's where you go. <laughs> you never know where you go. <laughs> that's right. So anyways, I, I go to Campus Crusade. I'm there for 11 years. And with Campus Crusade, yeah. you have to raise your own financial support. Mm -hmm. And basically, Campus Crusade is a coalition that teaches ministries, right? Uh, it's very much about sharing the gospel okay. in various different ways. Okay. So, uh, but you have to raise your own financial support and mm -hmm. that has always been easy. Then the last two years, it all falls apart. I can't fix it. Uh -huh. I've got the president of the organization writing letters for me. Nothing's working. And I finally yes. say, oh, my time is up here. Yeah, I got to go. There has but, to well, he's doing something, mm -hmm. but, and I just say, Lord, I'm not moving until you tell me where to go. Mm -hmm. And I just want to follow him. I just yeah. want to, where, you know, I don't want to go back and get a job. I come from. Um, you know, I had been in finance. I'd made a lot of money. I mm -hmm. didn't have any interest in going back to it. Mm -hmm. And um, so then I am in California. Okay. And I'm out for meetings with the Jesus Film, one of the divisions of Campus Crusade for Christ. And I have this dream during the night. And I'm talking to an imaginary businessman. We're calling Bill. Okay, Bill. So I'm talking to Bill on the phone. I decided to go by his office. And his office is this 
it's this home from the 1940s in Silver Spring, which is, huh. you know, I'm from the area. You're from there. You grew up DC. in DC. I grew up in Kensington, yeah. Okay. So this is the town next door. And there are these homes that are from the 1940s, and that's where his office was. Okay. So I pull up, I talk to him on the phone, then I go to his office, and all his workers are outside. This is all the dream. All his workers are outside, uh -huh. and I roll down the window. I'm like, hey, where's Bill? Uh -huh. And they're like, Bill is gone. I'm like, well, where is he? They say, no, he's gone, gone. He's dead. I say, he's not dead. I was just talking to him. Yes, he is. No, he's not. And, uh, and uh, they say, I'm telling you, he's dead. He dropped dead. We're really scared. Do you want to run the business? Uh -huh. That's the dream. Okay. So I wake up. I'm out in California, and a supporter had called uh -huh. uh, from the East Coast. Okay. And so I look at my phone. It's a friend, and I call her back. And so she says, my husband and I are aware of this organization. Their founder just dropped dead, and all I can think is you're the guy who's supposed to run this thing. Are you interested? And that was ICC. That was ICC. That is, so long. You just gave me the chills. Like, <laughs> well, the Lord like, gave you the chills because I had the same thing happen to me, right? I was like, wow. So, but long, you can't call up the board and say, I had a dream. Mm -hmm. You're supposed yeah. to hire me. <laughs> yeah. You can't just lead off with that. That's crazy. Yeah. This dream was kind of your epith epiphany, but you never, you yeah. would have never guessed it. Oh, I have no idea. You what would have this, never guessed it. You knew you nothing have, about You would have known that phone call was going to lead to all this. No. Yeah. So I guess moving on with that. Yeah. What is the intended call to action within this Persecutioner of the Year Awards? And also, why did you switch it to being named Persecutioner or Persecutions of the Years? Yeah, well, we used to call it the Hall of Shame. Which I, is I probably, read about that. Yes. Hall of Shame. So I was like, what inspired that <laughs> name at first, too, I guess? Well, because, you know, long, it's such, I think it's so hard, you're going to be familiar with this, mm. to get the church and to get the press exactly. to pay attention to persecution. It's an obscure and mm. complicated topic. Religious freedom is a complicated topic. Mm. And in the end, it's not really complicated, is it? It's so, not really that complicated no. at all. It's just whether or not we're willing to spread that awareness. That's right. So um, in, in the press, there's a, famous, uh, there's a famous saying about what a headline is. Uh -huh. So dog bites man is not a headline. No, no, they, it's not. they do that all the time. Exactly. But man bites dog is a headline. That's unusual. That's a headline. Mm -hmm. So if you get that, if you get the meaning yeah, of that, I get then the you get the, you, you betcha. Say. That's why we have the title like that. Okay. I, I respect that a lot, actually. Yeah. So why do you think it's so important for like, even people like me who are young, especially because, yeah. you know, we're the yeah. upcoming generation. You bet. Why is it so important for us to learn about religious persecution mm. and religious freedom? And how can like someone like me mm. spread that awareness to whether it's my colleague, one of my best friends, or even my parents? You like, bet. How, how do I spread that out to everyone else? How do mm. I spread the good news of the gospel? I, I would say this. I would start with this. That the... Um, the church in the West is largely dead. Really? That's not politically correct. But we're, you know, the church in America, we're very, we're very just caught up in the culture. And so, you know, our main pursuits are success and relationship and power, money. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think, I think it's like this, that we all have, if you're truly a Christian, you have uh, a flow of water. You've discovered the living water and you have a flow of water into your life. Uh -huh. And there's a faucet somewhere. Okay. And we keep that faucet on drip. Okay. Because we want just enough God to make our life sweet and so we don't die of thirst and we keep going. <laughs> exactly. I totally understand. That. Right? Yeah. So what happens with persecution? When you here's what happens with persecution. There's two things. First of all, so they, it starts with long uh you know this thing with you becoming a christian it's a little problematic i you're doing such a great job on your on your work mm -hmm. we've heard about you i think you really need to continue with career you don't want yeah. to lose your job do exactly. you yeah and if you say i've got to choose jesus there goes the job there goes the job and then what happens next and then you might start getting regular visits to the the local police officer yeah, the, the police, police chief and it's sad because in certain countries like yeah. The police and the government are kind of corrupt. For example, even, in, even yeah. in Vietnam right now, Absolutely. with all the religious persecutions happening. And right? of all places, yeah, I really think about those visits. To the, yeah. You have to come down to the police chief and sit in the exactly. office for five hours a day. And first of all, it starts with five, six-hour interrogations, mm -hmm. and then you sit all day. And then you might get, uh, then the beatings can start. And you just, yeah. so for the person who won't change, they lose one thing after another. They lose their job. They lose this. They lose their health. They start getting beaten. Yeah. So what happens to your inner being? So there's two things that happen. So first of all, we have all kinds of treasure in our life. Exactly. So you're a, you're a handsome guy. You probably like being popular and where people are drawn to you for that. Yeah. And that's a certain amount of treasure. 
uh, success. You want to be a success in life, right? We all do. That's a worldly treasure. Mm. Now, in the end, those things and sex, money, power, all that, it won't, it won't feed matter. your soul. It won't matter at the end of the day. Yeah, they, none of that. You're not going to, at the end of the day, you're not going to say, dang, I wish I had X more dollars or, yeah. you know. So um, what happens to that persecuted believer, all those things is you're trading in treasure. Mm -hmm. You're trading away treasure. And what's happening is you're constantly trading for Jesus. Okay. And what's happening is what he's taking you through a process until he is the only real treasure you have. You realize that it's all crap. It's all mm -hmm. false. There's no, there's no value in it. There's no treasure in it. And until you get to that point, mm -hmm. and that's the point for all of us, the Lord is doing this with all of us. Yeah, exactly. The persecuted are on an advanced timetable. But we all go through pain, we go through struggle, and he's trying to move you to a place where he is, where he is. the treasure. And what happens when you're so desperate, when you're in that cell and you've been interrogated and beaten and tortured, and mm. you don't, there's not an ounce of life left in you. Exactly. That faucet, you find that faucet. Mm -hmm. And in normal life, it drips because we've got it together. Exactly. You know, and then there's nothing together at that point. There's exactly. nothing left. And you turn that faucet on full force. So then what happens, then what happens is God's presence come, comes into you like yeah. never before. It's kind of like an enlightenment, you can say. Almost. Yeah, well, there's this source of power. Uh -huh. You were fueled by yourself before, and then all of a sudden there's nothing left, and you turn that faucet on, and you're flooded with him. Mm -hmm. Now, that's all he's ever wanted because he wants to get to the world, mm -hmm. but he does it through you. He does it through you. But until you're broken, that's... he's all bottled up, and there's not much of him in you. Exactly. Because we got it, especially as guys. You know, it's yeah. all about strength it's and, and self-dependence. Self dependence Yes. Pull yourself up by yeah. your bootstraps. Those are messages we love. We get it as men. Mm -hmm. But that stuff is all a blockage to him because he has to flow into us. There's that classic story of the woman that had to uh, walk down uh, the long hill to the river to get water every day. Mm -hmm. And in Vietnam, I think, I don't know if they still do it, but in the village, they had the long pole and you'd have, yeah. you'd have pots hanging. Exactly. And so one of her pots was cracked. It was broken. And uh, so she thought about throwing it away, but she repaired it and duct taped it and put uh -huh. everything around. She'd go down to the river every day, up and down the hill, up and down the hill. Now, the one that was broken, it leaked water. Uh -huh. So she got back and there wasn't as much water in there. But on the path, on that side of the path, that's where all the flowers grew. That's crazy. That's the Holy Spirit. That's but the he Holy has Spirit, to get it? out of us. And he, and he brings life. Whatever he touches... Mm -hmm. He brings to life and he heals, oh. but he's bottled up in us. Exactly. And until we're broken, the cra the pot has to crack so he can get out of us and get out around you into the world. That's a crazy way to see it. I've never yeah. thought about it like that. So to wrap it up, yeah. I'm sorry, we have to end this interview. Soon. Absolutely. But as ICC president, yeah. how do you feel about the religious persecutions happening in Vietnam? I'm not sure if you're aware, but even Christians over there. I'm aware. So is there any ongoing ICC projects or anything ICC can do to help spread awareness of religious persecution in Vietnam. And for the people in Vietnam who are experiencing it, what is their sign of hope? Yeah, so a couple of things. One of the things that BPS has done, BPSOS has done mm -hmm. over the years, is train believers to document what's going on. So when the authorities come in to get pictures, to write it down, send in reports. Mm -hmm. So, because Washington is driven by data and reports. Exactly, it's all about so, data analytics, it's all about analytics and numbers and statistics. Yeah, now you talk about you talk to the villager, that Christian villager, and explain yeah. that to him. That's, that's going to be a hard one to exactly. get over. But to expose, to bring light into the darkness, they want to operate, the secret police want to operate in darkness, right? Mm -hmm. So um, that's the big thing is document, send in pictures, uh, speak out, and above all, spread the word. Mm -hmm. So every dictator, every despot that's hated, that hated the Bible, mm -hmm. you have to look at it from a long-term view. Look at the long-term view of Christianity. What did Jesus say? The gates of hell cannot prevail. Exactly. So Iran, the Ayatollah comes in. Mm -hmm. I'm going to I'm going to destroy Christianity. We're going to be the greatest Islamic nation on earth. We're going to spread Islam to the world. Mm -hmm. 50 years later, you know what's happened? What? Islam, all the young have turned away. They hate Islam. They hate, they hate the whole religion itself. It's that mocks are empty. And they've fallen in love with Jesus. Crazy. Now, this is the way of the church. It's hard to see it in the second you're in it and when you're suffering. But this is a way because there's a river that flows from heaven and it starts with a trickle and it comes down to earth. And the longer it goes on, the longer the time goes on, this, this river gets wider and wider, wider, and, wider. and deeper and deeper. And what happens at the end? Do you remember? No. It covers the whole earth. 
So all of the dictator, the despot, uh, the Marxists, they're not even Marxists anymore yeah. in Vietnam. It's a mafia. Yeah, it's a mafia. These, yeah. these guys will be washed away. But in the meantime, there's a lot of pain to endure. Exactly. And one of my most memorable uh, times yeah, so in tell, ministry. Speak, speak to me about that. I'd yes. love to hear about that. So one of my favorite places is Vietnam. And uh, we went, uh, we had gathered a bunch of prisoners' wives mm -hmm. um, together and gave them money to come from all over the country exactly. to a central place. And we met uh, with these wives, and oh my gosh, you could just feel uh, the burden they were carrying. Like the pain, the sorrow, yeah. everything, like yeah. the terror they had to go through. Yeah, and they're carrying it all because exactly. the husband's gone, he's in prison. And they, on the sad part is they probably have kids too. And they have kids. Yeah. And so, now you probably know, but a Vietnamese prison is not a U.S. prison. It's not a U.S. prison at all. Now you're going to work hard oh, yeah. all day. You're going to get fed two bowls of rice with mm -hmm. a few vegetables. You can bribe the guards. The family can bribe the guards to get, get a few pieces of meat. But um, and then you're in a you're in a cell packed, so you have to sleep side to side. Okay. And the toilet's a hole. It's not even a hole. It's a corner, and it's filled up with waste. And if you're the new guy in the cell, you are next to that. And if you get a cut, you're, you can get gangrene. Exactly. You're gonna lose your finger, your hand, your arm. And so that's the environment. That's where their husbands are. Mm -hmm. And so for many of them, it's gonna be a death sentence. Mm -hmm. Even if they get out, they're so damaged, they're so broken. Uh, like they don't see the light to anything. It can be they... years to come back if they come back. So that's that's who came into us. That's who came into us. And and you can see, you can feel it. You can't live the life they're living it, but you you know, you've read all the reports and you've interviewed lots of victims. So that's who was there. And so what we were doing is I was giving out uh, money so that they could, first of all, travel to their husbands in prison mm -hmm. so that they could, uh, we were giving out money so they could buy goats. That's crazy. Because I don't know if you know how this works, but if you put a male and female goat together, they make little goats, and yeah. then little goats make more goats. Exactly. And then, now so, there's a whole food supply chain. Over here. Yeah, well, then they have a sustainable resource yeah. to take care of them, to rescue them. Yeah. Um, and so for me, you know, I gave out all the money that ICC had. And for me, uh, I ran out, I said, you know, this is an old movie. Have you ever heard of Schindler's List? I've heard of it, but I don't think I've ever watched it. It's a, it's about, I've heard it's a great movie. It's a great movie. Yeah. And it's about rescuing uh, the Jews from the Nazis. And Schindler was a German businessman. Mm -hmm. And uh, he is, uh, I think he's having to leave and he's leaving. He's leaving and I think in his, you know, chauffeured car and his fur coat and all of a sudden, he, and all the Jews he helped are coming to mm -hmm. say thank you. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, that's how you felt when all of them saw you. That's how I felt. And so I said, and so, you know, I, I'm going to lose my spiritual reward for this, yeah. but I pulled from my own pocket mm -hmm. and yeah. gave a couple hundred yeah. bucks just to help. And it was just like, it was such a privilege. Was, yeah, being able to do something so good and so, even, yeah. even a little money, amount of money it like goes that. So far. It goes so far. And will rescue. I think it was 80 bucks at, at the time. Yeah. Would rescue this family. And it's like, I don't deserve to help. I don't deserve to be in this position yeah. to help. Exactly. So that that will teach you a lesson. Okay. It's all, all our treasure. Is, is, there's a, a purpose for it, and it's not to be piled up and just right. for us. So. so to leave off on that, if yeah. you had like any, I guess, remarks, any yeah. advice, like what would you say to our viewers and supporters about religious persecution, having faith in that, and having faith that ICC, not just involving yeah. Vietnam, but countries all around the world. Yeah. How can they support ICC and your mission? Yeah. Your... So first of all, I'd say follow, follow ourselves or VOM or Open Door, somebody who's going to feed you and tell you what's going on, or otherwise you're going to go back to your life and you're going to forget. But this is the Lord's body. Here's what I'd say is that the body of Christ means that the spirit of Jesus has come into somebody. That's what a Christian is. So mm -hmm. if he is living in somebody, what happens when they're in prison or when they're being raped? Mm -hmm. So when Paul was knocked off his horse, he, when he was Saul and persecuting, yeah. jailing, killing Christians, Jesus knocks him off his horse. Do you remember uh, Paul says, who are you, yeah. Lord? Do you remember what Jesus said? I don't remember his exact response. He said, I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. So think about that. Did you get that? Yeah, I got that. He didn't say you're per persecuting my followers. He didn't yeah. say you're persecuting my children. You're he persecuting said, me. I am Jesus. You are persecuting me. And it's like, that's the message. That's why we do this. It's that's life why and you death. you do what you do. We are serving the body of Christ. Go do a study on one body and you'll understand. Okay. You'll start to see it and understand okay. it. 
but so first of all, you serve the body of Christ and you will get far more. It's like me with those Vietnamese wives. Mm. You will get far more in return than anything you give out. They exactly. will teach you so much. They'll teach you so much. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for that. I hope you, ICC, and you continue doing the work that you're doing. Everything thank you're you doing is amazing. Thank and you, if there's any support BPSOS can do, I'm sure we'd love Okay, to I have you. a credit card form for you right here. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thanks. Uh.